stay tuned for the Joan Quinn Profiles. Joan served the state of California as a member on the Arts Council and on the Film Commission. She was formerly on the Architectural Commission and fulfilled two terms on the Fine Arts Commission for the city of Beverly Hills. As an editor for Andy Warhol's Interview Magazine, Condé Nast Publications, and the Hearst Corporation, Joan covered the world of fashion, the mysteries of food, the excitement of theater, and the international art scene. She continues to find people who are on the cutting edge of their professions. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Agajanian Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. We're taping here at the Hollywood Museum in the historic Max Factor building, and our guests today are actor Jason Ritter and musician Dennis Agajanian. Actor Jason Ritter was born and raised in Los Angeles. He graduated from Crossroads High School and NYU's Tisch School of the Arts. He studied at the Atlantic Theater Company in New York, and I would say has probably been working ever since. You've seen him in TV, um, in Girls, Gravity Falls, and another period, and in films like The Meddler, Good Dick, I can say it. You did. Good job. <laughs> Happy endings and always worthy. And lots and lots of stage. Off-Broadway, Lincoln Center, London's West End, and the Beverly Hills Wallace Theater, where he's now showing, uh, performing in City of Conversation. Conversation. Yes. Who wrote that? Uh, Anthony Giardina. And, and what is that story about? It's basically about a family who... Um, uh, this this woman, uh, Hester Ferris, played by Christine Lottie, who is this uh, woman in the 70s who basically has these dinner parties in Washington where she brings people from both sides and they sort of lay down their arms and they sort of talk about bills and, and there's this, it's where this sort of natural conversation happens. They've been fighting all day um, and here is a, a place where actually things get done. She's very influential in both parties, right? Or she yes. has influence for some she reason. Has, she has influence. She's able to sort of, um, you know, kind of, she's almost this sort of social oil that, that, you know, brings people together and she's very charming and she can, maybe someone can hear something in a new way when it's coming from her. She's, she's very, um, yeah. There at one time, I don't know who she's fashioned after, but there were many women like that, I think. Um, one of them was Evangeline Bruce, who was the uh, wife of the ambassador from Britain, oh, I right. think. And another one was Harriman's wife. She also had parties like that at the time, and then she became an ambassador to France. Yeah. So, so I think it's interesting because those times don't happen right now. It's true. Yeah, we've we've come into a, a phase where people are just not even willing to have any kind of conversation. They're just sort of <laughs> screaming their own opinion, and if you don't agree, then they don't want to hear what you have to say, and, and no something's lost. And there. no one's gracious enough to have you in their home, because they were gracious. Yeah. They had you in the embassies or in their homes in Georgetown. Yeah, you can disagree and still be friends and still be, you know, human beings, but uh, it's just gotten so polarized, and, you know, people have always and will always really care about politics, but, you know, sometimes when it starts to come at the expense of being able to get along or it's when it's wielded more as a weapon <laughs> right. than, you know. Um. I think your role was pretty interesting because I felt like you had three roles in it. <laughs> it right? Does, it does sort of feel like that, yeah. <laughs> the, you came in as the hippie kid with the long wig on. Yep, exactly. And then you ended up as the son who'd... Um, matured. Yes, You had exactly. a mustache. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and then you came back as the son of your yes. character, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah. So I, I technically played two characters, but the first, uh, there's a big time jump in between right. the first act and the second act. So, and between act two, scene one and act two, scene two. But uh, yeah, so it, it's really fun to get to to play throughout all these different time periods and see the effects of the relationships crumbling over, you know, decades. And, and did you, uh, as you came back, you played the son. Mm -hmm. And did that remind you of any of the things that you were doing in your own life with your 
as you started in show business? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, playing someone who's a, an adult in the 70s and 80s took a little bit of sort of research and, you know, I had to sort of understand and, and base things on relatives and people that I knew who were adults back then. But I was about the age of Ethan um, when Obama was elected, so I remember that period oh. of time. And so all the references are people and things that I know and remember. And so that was an easier character for you to play. In some really. ways, yeah. yeah. I mean, they were both different from me in, in pretty key ways, but I, I understand at the core, even though they're very different, I understand, you know, who they are and why they are the way that they are. You come from a show business family. Mm -hmm. So um, let's talk about that. Tell me a little bit about it. It's easier to hear you say it than for <laughs> me to say it. Um, well, my, my grandparents on my father's side were both actors. Um, Tex Ritter and Dorothy Faye Southworth um, met on a movie um, called Rainbow Over the Range. And was he a musician too? He was a singing cowboy. Yeah, so I know, he was sort it was of so great. Yeah, yeah, it was it was pretty great. So he would he would play music and and uh, and he would also you know be in these movies fighting and he was always a white hat um, and uh, and my grandma was amazing too and she ended up being the the hostess at the Grand Ole Opry for years. Oh, she was? Is yeah. that what she did? Yeah, yeah. And she sang there too? She sang and she introduced the different acts. And, oh, uh, I yeah, didn't realize that. She was very that. heavily involved there and when they lived in, in Nashville. And, uh, and then, yeah, and then my father and mother are both actors. And, um, and so they were, they were cautiously encouraging, I would say. They didn't for want you. to say, yeah, they didn't for want you. to say, don't do it, don't follow your dream, but they also wanted me to have a realistic understanding of what I was <laughs> setting myself up but for. But you must have seen it as a child because you were around it all the time. Did you know your grandparents? I knew my grandmother. My grandfather had passed before I was born, but I was able to, you know, I know what the sound of his voice right, is. I'm right. sort of, I've been able to hear his music and see his movies, and so I've gotten more of a sense of him than I might have otherwise. Can you sing like him? Oh no, he had a very, <laughs> he had a great deep, deep voice and he could do that sort of crack, I think it's called a tear in your voice where, oh yeah, you know, well, he it's, would, yeah, yeah, it's really a amazing. A tear in your voice, isn't yeah. that a great way to describe it? Yeah, I, I love listening to his voice and I, I listened to a lot of it growing up, so it's very. So was he encouraging to your father who was John Ritter, an yes. actor, did John Ritter do anything other than act? Was he a singer too? He was not a singer. Um, <laughs> he he loved music. My dad was a huge music fan, um, but he he never really um, he never really got into singing. I think sometimes you know when when your parents are known for something, you you, you, you feel more pressure. Way. Yeah, I mean, well, did you feel pressure? That's what I was wondering. Uh, a little bit. I mean, I, you know, <coughs> there was there was some pressure initially. Um, to you know, go into comedy and things like that, but I, um, I would always feel the comparisons much more in trying oh, to do wow. that, and so I, I ended up, um, well, I ended up being way more nervous in comedy auditions anyway. <laughs> so I ended up getting more dramatic, dramatic parts. But yeah. that's what you like. I do like that a lot. Yeah. Did you you studied at the Atlantic Theater Company? Were yeah. you on stage a lot with them? Yeah, I, I you know there were at at uh, NYU there was a main stage where. Um, people from all the different acting studios would go and do uh, plays, but I, I always just stayed with Atlantic and, and uh, did their plays, and um, I just I loved it so much, and I loved all the teachers there. It I think great. one of the great things was being at Lincoln Center mm -hmm. and being in Wendy Wasserstein's um, third. Yes, yes, that was, that was an incredible experience. Um, Were you be, still in school when you got that? I was out of school maybe three years, but oh, I was were. able to, you know, invite my teachers and, and oh, uh, it was really fun. Let them see what you've done. Yeah, yeah. And third was your character, right? Third was my character and uh, there, there were some similar themes to City of Conversation in, in third, you know, politics getting in the way of a oh. human connection. And, and third meant what? 
My character's name was Woodson Bull the Third, and he goes by the nickname Third, which drives his t teacher crazy because he seems like such an alien to her. <laughs> and then when you left there, did you go to London? I had been to London before. Oh, you had been to. Well, yeah. Did you go to Rada? I went to Rada for a semester. Oh, you uh, did. Through NYU and uh, oh. and um, um, got over my uh, initial just fear and aversion to Shakespeare. I still am very scared of it, but now I I, I will dip my toes. In and and at least I understand what I'm reading. Is that why you go? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is that why people Conquer go? Conquer fear, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, to dip your toes in, let's talk about these independent films that you've made because I think it's so wonderful for young actors to do these independent films, don't you? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think I think a you know they're the stories are very unique and you know it, 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 they haven't been um, sort of watered down by thousands of producers and executives oh, who are trying way. to make it lo lo you know ha have the widest possible Commercial, audience right yeah it's it's a one writer's view and a one director's view and a lot of times it's the same person and so you get a sort of streamlined artistic vision that's uh that's, that's really very, fun that's very important mm -hmm. i didn't realize that but it is that's that's what makes independent films so interesting i mean i always yeah. want to go see them and one of the interesting ones we mentioned um the, the detective one. Oh yeah, yeah, it's exactly good dick. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and it was Mariana Palka. Mariana Palka uh, wrote and directed that, and started and it and it? produced it. Oh, um, and then. And uh, and then you know we made it with all of our friends. We shot it in our apartment. We got all oh. of our friends to help, and then it magically got into Sundance and uh, had a, a life, and it's it's still out there circulating. And I love when people have found it and, and, and watch it. talk yeah, about it yeah it's such the a other, personal movie the other thing that I, I know she's made other films mariana in mm -hmm. between and i know she's a, a big wonderful woman director mm -hmm. um and we screened the next film at my daughter's house yes always worthy mm -hmm. and mariana was there you were there you were on a panel and it was a project that the chimera project uh, yes is producing because they want to um promote women directors. Yeah, which is So fantastic. tell us about Always Worthy. What was the process of making that work? The process was, um, Amberly Coulson was a, a friend of ours, is a friend of ours, <laughs> not was, <laughs> uh, still is. And uh, we saw her one woman show um, and big hair, big hair, and <laughs> and uh, and she did have big hair in it, and uh, and we loved it. And Mariana and Amberly became fast friends. They were friends before that, but uh, and I think you know sometimes when Mariana was the sort of first in our little group of friends to say, "Let's get a camera, let's make something happen, let's just do it ourselves, let's stop waiting for someone to give us permission to make the art oh, that we want to make." That's the point, right? Yeah, and and I think Amberly and a couple other people were inspired by that, and so Amberly wrote a script and. Mariana uh, directed it and and, and made so it how'd happen. you cast it? Ah, uh, <laughs> they just you know. How did they cast they it? They basically they they called um, the what you, it's what you do you with an independent movie. A lot of times you're you have the resources that you have and that's it. So, and you call your friends. <laughs> so you call your friends and and uh, you know over the course of time we've we've uh, accumulated lots of really incredible talented friends Eric Edelstein is one of them He's, Eric uh, and Amberly and Amberly and uh, Jason and me yeah sure Ian Gomez <laughs> yes exactly yeah. were, were you all friends uh, yeah yeah basically yeah we all sort of knew each other and um, and you know you, you you find a person that you like and you think is a good person and a great artist and you just sort of Go all right. I, I, you know, I, I don't want to let you go. There's not a lot of uh, nice people in this <laughs> town. So, oh, so you all just sti stick yeah, together. Yeah, you stick together. Yeah, I and think you it's also, important to make a And community. you also make your own path together in exactly. a way, right? Because you're always helping each other. Exactly. And I think a lot. It's it's become now more of a, a path that people are starting to recognize with, you know, the Duplass brothers or right. you know something where they started just making their own movies and now they have so many television shows and and movies that they produce and you know they've they've created a whole great community or Lena Dunham you know same I thing. know all of them it's great they all started making these little and little but well, independent yeah, totally. movies right yeah. well Jason 
I'm so glad that you've done that because you're doing independent, but you're doing also other big movies like The Meddler, which is a big movie. Yeah, yeah, uh, it was a it was a a, a big independent movie. Oh, uh, a big independent. Well, it's I don't know actually. No, I guess it wasn't. Actually, independent. it's pretty yeah. commercial. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but, and it's um, out there all over the place now. So keep working. <laughs> I'm gonna <Okay>. try. <laughs> don't go away. We'll be right back with Dennis Agajanian. Hi, I'm Joan Agajanian Quinn, and we're here taping at the Hollywood Museum, and we're back after our first session with Jason Ritter, and I'm here with award-winning guitar player, singer, Dennis Agajanian, who is known as the great American picker. He's my cousin. I'm proud to say that. He was born and raised in Los Angeles. He graduated from Cal Poly University with a Bachelor of Science degree. And let's tell him how we're related. We're related full cousins. <laughs> I mean, we are my dad and your, your father or brothers. And um, it's just uh, and we it was a monumental together. time <laughs> when we grew up together. And I saw you in Levi's and always dressing cool. Oh, thank you. And, but, uh, but you were the little kids. Well, we you, were. And, right. and, you know, there was no music in our family. My father wasn't musical, but your dad right. seemed to be. He seemed to be. Yeah, he started playing the mandolin. He started playing the guitar. And then he told us to leave his instruments alone. And so uh, <laughs> being curious, I would get the guitar during the day and I'd practice. And then finally he had a party and he got his guitar out. And I said, you know, I could do better than that. And he said, kind of yelled at me. And so I grabbed his guitar and I played. And he goes, I'll buy you an instrument. What do you want? So that's kind of how it happened. But he was self-taught, right? <laughs> self-taught, right. He just taught himself, played mandolin and played the, uh, played the guitar. Because he, he must have just had that gene because no one else in our family was like that. Our grandfather, I'm not, my father pretty amazing. wasn't. Yeah, pretty amazing. He, and he was good. And, and he Uncle could ben, read notes. Uncle, Uncle ben. ben, right. He could read notes and, and everything. But, but uh, Uncle Ben great was communicator. In, in sports. Yes. My dad was in sports. Right. And your father was he, a uh, musician. He was a musician. <laughs> Alan Hale wanted him to uh, come to Hollywood. He begged him to come and do several movies with him. And I guess he knew him in the in the uh, military. But uh, my dad did community plays, and he memorized everybody else's part. You know. Oh, he did do community plays. Oh yeah, plays? he was he was bad man Pedro, and he was a lot of different people. It oh, was really a character. Yeah, he was great. We loved Uncle Eli. <laughs> I mean, going Eli, Eli Shagajanian, going to family events, they would always call on him. Did he oh, like right. it or not? He would write things. He'd write things and memorize it going, going to these things. Knowing and that so, he was oh, going to yeah, do something. Oh, yeah, knowing he was going to do it. And he was, everybody just seemed to like him so much, all the cousins. I know. It was always great. So I didn't realize that. You went to Cal Poly. What were you studying there? Rhetorical theory, the, the uh, science of communication and the canons and how you use them. And I had to write a thesis, actually, to get my Bachelor of Science. And so um, I know you got a Bachelor of Science at USC. Yes, but teaching. So I know, but a Bachelor teach? of Science, that's amazing. I wanted to, but I started playing guitar quite a lot. And um, so it was just an honor to, to be able to play in, play in the Troubadour in different places. And during the time you were in school? Yeah, during the time I was in school. And when I graduated from, from high school, I was able to do churches in different places and, and, you know, paid my own way through college. No one paid it. Did you? Yeah, everything. When, when you came out of Cal Poly, did you take any music there at all? No, not at all. I took, I took, uh, drama, but pretty much oh. the science of communication. But mostly that. Uh, You're a very good communicator, by the way. When you, when you decided, you don't say. I don't, <laughs> when you decided to take a path in music, did, right. did you think that you were going to make a living doing that? Yes, I did because I always thought I could play a restaurant and not starve. You know, back then, oh. and I saw, you know, I would go to different clubs and I'd see people taking drugs and great, great musicians, and you see them taking drugs, and after a while. They weren't as clean, and they weren't really, really well as musicians. So that always feared me, so I never took drugs. But I never knew what it was like. One, one of the things uh, that I was reading in your bio, because, mm -hmm. I mean, no matter how close we've been for all our lives, uh, I still read your bio to see what some of the things were. There was a turning point, and it wasn't far 
from this Hollywood Museum. It was down the road a bit at the Salt Company. The Salt Company. What was that? Well, I went there and they, they asked me, it's right off of Hollywood Presbyterian Church there. They had their own little coffee oh, house. Oh, oh is so, that what it was? Yeah, and I went and I auditioned and the guy fell off a stool. I thought he was mad and he <laughs> goes, can you be here tomorrow night and Saturday night? And, and so I was there and that's pretty much where the start was. We we used to have thousands of people come. We'd do Hollywood Press, there'd be 3,000 people in the audience. You mean in the church? In the church too, we'd do concerts and then... Last night I played in Los Angeles. We had about 800 people there. At the church last uh, night? I was in uh, Chino Valley. Oh, you were? Yeah, right. Well, because you're never here. You live down yeah. in, near San Diego. San Diego, and right. it's such a drive to get to you. I know. You know, we're staying for a month and a half in Santa Monica. Love it. I got here in, what, 20 minutes? I'm so glad. Hello. I'm so glad that you were here. <laughs> um, once you finished the Salt Company, do you think that was a turning point in your career? Did that show you which way to go? Yes, it did. I didn't want to go to the Nashville scene. I didn't. Some of the music was kind of corny until, you know, you had Johnny Cash, and of course, he was a friend of mine. And then you had Waylon Jennings, and they brought about a real outlaw type music. Well, in the Christian music that I do, I have that outlaw. So, lyrics like, come to the rock, you don't have to get stoned anymore. You know, uh -huh. the rock being Christ. And so, but, but that's the thing. You, you shifted from... The, the song your friend's right. influence. I mean, Johnny Cash was yeah. a great influence on you, right? And Waylon yes, he Jennings, was. and 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 that. And yet, you shifted the other way. You went to Christian music, right? But I kept it outlaw. I kept it country rock. I kept it. That's why I'm playing so many places because a lot of the Christian music today is the same. A lot of worship is the same, and it's the same style. But our style is just completely different. And what is that style then? To try to appeal to the emotions or the character, the logic of your audience. To try to know that there are people out there that might like rock and roll. Oh, and, right. and so and on an acoustic guitar, kind of like Crosby, Stills did and Neil Young did. And so in the Christian market, they go, this is different. It's not that I'm really good. It's just that I'm different. No, you're really and, good. Well, because you be, wait a minute. You I, know, being different is, is it. And then You say you don't go to Nashville, but you do go to Nashville. Well, because I'm, you've I'm won a, all these awards I've there. won Musician of the Year eight times there. Eight. Eight. It looks yeah. like there's hundreds of well, those awards on your piano. A lot of those awards <laughs> belong to even better musicians than myself. I mean, there's, as you know, it's on this great artist in Nashville. And so it's an honor for me to, to play guitar and even do anything like that. So you do have your guitar. Is there something special about this guitar? Yes, I, uh, I was a Martin guitar man, and I'm endorsed by Taylor Guitars. And I told Taylor, Bob Taylor, who's a great friend, They've done a 180 with their guitars now. They're just absolutely incredible. And I told them to make me a D28, and he made me this great oh, so Martin guitar. Made this, it this, for you? It's a Taylor guitar, and they made it special for me because I've always played Martin guitars. But I said, make me a Martin. It's the greatest Taylor. And they made this. It's a prototype. And then they made me another one that's a prototype. And I have a 12-string that's a prototype. So I'm kind of the race driver. The guy is a genius the way he makes <laughs> guitars. And so I do things on the guitar, and they go, oh, my goodness. Like I played uh, Barcelona, Spain. We had 15,000 in the stadium there, and I played Malaguena. Yes, because so they say that's your it, big right. thing. Right, and so, you know, they saw the guitar, so they made changes after they saw it on video, you know. And so they made changes to it because I'm a real hard player. Did you play it on this guitar? I played it on another guitar. And they know. made this one. This one's better than the other one that they made. So it's, it's really nice. I, I love the art with it, and I love to be able to just write music. Sometimes we'll look at pictures, or sometimes I've scored movies, and where you look at different scenes, and then you write different you know, uh, parts. Does it make things. a different sound? Is that why it's different? No, it's, it's good. Every, every string is, is pretty perfect. Usually the, the low strings are, are, the, are the loudest, but here it's all... It's very it's melodic, perfect. right? Yeah, 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 and it's... Um, so playing with this guitar reminds me of uh, that great uh, onstage thing you did with Charlie Daniels. I love Charlie <laughs> Daniels. The devil went down to Georgia. I was just with him again. Oh, we is just, he your good friend? We were just in Nashville there, and we, we played. had about 12,000 there, and I played with him. It's, he's, a lot, he's a good friend. Oh, a he's, real nice guy. Oh, it's so great. When you know, he's a great like artist. Dueling he pen. really is a great artist. I mean, but he thinks you're a great artist. Well, and so you do these dueling <laughs> things and you sing with him yeah. up when he sings oh, that. It's so great. Yeah, Devil Went Down to Georgia. We're doing all these. these like, here's a part to it. A... 
you know, he does that on the fiddle and then, and, and with then the you guitar. play it with him. And then we go back and forth and back and forth. It's you so know. great. And another great person you've you've worked with is Billy Graham. I think oh. Billy Graham is like one of the great Americans of ours. He is he's just so monumental and he's the same Billy as he was years ago and he's still he's ninety seven. He doesn't hear and see real well. But Joan, he's sharper than a tack. I was with him at his home and of course he has no dishwasher <laughs> and Victoria is washing the dishes, right? Your wife. And she, right. And then and then uh, you know, she feeds him ice cream and, and he sits there and it talks to you like that. Well I love you, Dennis. And oh, he looks you right in the I eye. I love that. And and you also work with his son Franklin. <laughs> Franklin, yeah. We're best friends since seventy four. And you go to Alaska. Go to Alaska, help the Eskimo kids. I know, that's so great. Hooper Village, tell us about oh, that. Oh, yeah. We are, we are there. A lot of these kids are, are abused, Joan. And most of the parents, about 80% of them are alcoholics and drug addicts. Oh, they're all yeah. Uh, so we go there. Yeah, they're there? Eskimos. So we're going to these Eskimos, and we're helping the kids. I'm teaching them the guitar and, oh. and speak to them, teach them the Bible, too. And it's been, it's been really... Uh, a neat thing, but I'll tell you, no running water. It's you're out there in the middle of nowhere. And you've taken a small plane, right? Small plane. We crashed at the the last <laughs> village we went to. Victoria and I landed, and it was a King Air, a nice plane. And the pilots, the plane went sideways, and we hit an embankment. We got out. Oh. We went and did a concert. Another plane came and got us. Oh wow! I know the Lord looks down on he you does. because you're I mean, so great. Don't. It's 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 something. <laughs> but when it one of the other things that we talked about um, um, being at your home a lot, and we talked about the camaraderie you have with other musicians. You and know the what? There jams. is that consanguinity <laughs> that's there with, with, with other artists. John Jorgensen lives in LA, and he's one of the greatest guitar players, and a lot of different people. The Doyle Gutierrez Dogs, brothers. The Gutierrez brothers we that love, love them, you. And we love them. Oh, um, remember the Gutierrez brothers? They go. Besame, Besame, Joni. I know. I remember I that. Know, they're so great. <laughs> they're really great. As you walked in the house, they were doing that. I remember know. that? I, that was so wonderful. The other thing is, before we leave, I know um, you talked about a reality TV show. Did it ever come about? We're in the process of uh, Can we doing. Talk about we've it? done it. Yeah, we've done a sizzle reel, and we're we're. Uh, they're in the process of trying to figure it all out. You because know. that's that's what reminded me is like when we come to your house for dinner or Thanksgiving dinner. It's the same. It's the same, and the TV should be there the redoing should, the reality show. It part is like of it, a reality right? show. You have your friends and you play, and you know people want to see. And they follow you the, around. They yes, follow they you do. from oh, stadium yes. to stadium. Oh yes, they do. It's it's um, it's amazing because I'm. You know, I guess I'm known as a guitar player, and that's what's kept me going. If I was a singer, you got a lot of singers, ah. especially to sing better than I. Oh. But as a, a musician in the arts, that helps. And you compose, right? I compose, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. you've composed a wonderful afternoon <laughs> for us. Thank you so much. Love you, so cousin. Glad. Love you so much. Mm -hmm. So you. glad you were here. Thanks for watching. Keep writing to J-A-Q-U-I-N-N-1 at AOL.com. We'll see you next time.